Some of the people who took photos for our moving pictures traveled the world in order to tell their unique stories. But the real story of the man you're about to meet can be seen in the eyes of the people he photographed, people living in a war-torn village in Afghanistan. When we're taught to take a picture, you know, I spent my whole childhood saying cheese all the time. You know. Over there, when you take photographs, you have to really say something to get them to smile. It was four years ago when Bud McKenzie became part of the pictures that would change his life. People look at me and say, you crazy? What the heck are you going over there for? But when you see the faces that inspire his mission. It's got to be depressing if you go home at night and you don't have any food on the table. The images that haunt his dreams. One out of four children dies before the age of five. You too might begin to understand. It's a very bleak existence for most people there. And they need help. They need our help. When you're standing inside the room, you can't walk away from it. So Bud walked right into it, not quite knowing what would happen as he ventured from the East Bay to the Middle East, to the village of Lalander, Afghanistan, just south of Kabul. This one is of the valley itself. And if you take a picture from a distance, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you say, what's the problem? Well, as the photographs get closer and you see the destroyed homes and you realize the aqueduct systems have been destroyed and the landmines have been planted all around and the people don't have enough food to eat on, then this sort of idyllic scene takes on a whole new perspective. And that, too, is when Bud's perspective of the world began to change as he sought to bring the people living in the world's fifth poorest country a chance. Too many people have given up. And one of the reasons I run around all over the place is I don't want people to give up. You shouldn't give up. Slowly, the people of Lalander are building a better life. And these are the kind of rewards that I get out of this, seeing photos like these. With Bud's help, they've planted over 12,000 fruit trees, brought health care to sick and dying children, built a school that educates boys and girls standing up to Taliban threats that daughters will be killed if they're found in school. This photo is taken right at the school that we financed. And these are guards. They guard the school now 24-7. And something else unheard of. They're giving women a voice. Historically, even in our own country and other countries, women, some women have had to step forward. And they've had to be assertive. Well, this is one of those. And how many are there more behind her? I don't know. What he does know is this. We have 3,000 people now who are really hopeful in their future. Hope. You can see it in the eyes of the children, in the face of a village elder. This is a photograph that has um, a lot of hope in it. It's a picture of a woman. Remarkable because women, even now, are rarely allowed to be photographed. Hope. Hope is the biggest, the biggest ingredient, the greatest gift that we're providing over there is that there are, there's hope in the village. Just an amazing story. I've known Bud McKenzie for several years. His story and his commitment to helping others in Afghanistan simply is unsurpassed. And he joins me to talk a little bit more about it. Good to see you again. Thanks so much, Brent. You have made a lot of progress, but there's still a lot more work to be done. One of the things we notice in the picture were the women and, and young girls in schools. That's a huge thing over there. It's a huge thing. It's things that quite literally people are dying over that single issue. Down in southern Afghanistan in Kandahar in the Helmand province, they've had hundreds of schools that have been destroyed and burned. Educators have been killed. And to the credit of the Afghans, they still just keep coming. They keep bringing the daughters to school. And in, this, in some of the villages where you've been, we see men with guns outside. But that's to protect the people so that they can go to the school. Absolutely. I call them the hall monitors. But uh, yes, AK-47s, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to protect that single issue. Let's talk about some of the things you've had to learn because you go over there and once you got there, you found there were schools to be built, but there, there was irrigation 
crops to be planted, uh, legal issues. There are all kinds of things suddenly you became involved with, and you didn't have any experience in those things. You had to learn a lot of different things. No, no. By going there myself, I saw it for myself. I met with the people, with the leaders, and they began to identify their priorities, and we try to address their priorities, not just come in and superimpose what we perceive they need. Well, and that's one of the things you've been talking to me about as we go forward. You're bringing in things like seeds for crops, but then you're trying to get out, stay in the background, uh, not let the Westerner do it, not let the American do it, but the, the Afghan people do it. Absolutely. We want to work in partnership with them. We listen to them. We let them prioritize their needs and work on that list together. And there are three, there are three legs to the stool, if you will. There's economic development, there's health care, and there's education, education being the biggest component. And you also talk about you're just doing this kind of grassroots. This isn't some big federal agency. You don't get tons of dollars that come in. You have to come back to the United States here in the Bay Area and fundraise and try to get enough funds to keep going forward with the next project. Absolutely. This is totally grassroots. I represent, in effect, hundreds, if not thousands of Americans now who are invested in helping this village. And they get it. They understand the grassroots effort, and they appreciate it. Talk to me about one of the things you, you, you explain when you go through a village, a, a sign that the villagers oh. give to you. What is that all about? They have a gesture over there that uh, we should incorporate all over the world. But I've never had an Afghan yell at me or tell me to go away and an uh, American go home. And once an, an Afghan knows what I'm doing over there, they have this gesture where they take their right hand and place it to their heart and look you right in the eye and press their hand in. And this is a wonderful gesture that you can give from hundreds of yards away. A priceless photograph in your memory, I suppose. Absolutely. Bud, thanks for coming by and sharing your story. Keep up the good work. Keep us posted.